Let's take another look at the recursive function. This time, with a little help from a friend from the old country, eh? Cue banjo. Leonardo Pisano Bigolo. Also known as Fibonacci to you and me. He was a really cool mathematician dude. He lived about 800 years ago, quite a long time. So he was really fortunate. His dad was this wealthy merchant and he got to travel all around Europe. Now you see, when he was taught in school about numbers, they look like this. As he traveled through Europe, he was introduced to numbers that look like this. Something more like what we're used to, zero through nine. And man, did his wheels start to turn. Of all the things he's known for, he's most famous for his Fibonacci sequence. And he discovered this breeding rabbits of all things. So here's the Fibonacci sequence. You're given two numbers, zero and one, and each sequential number is the sum of the previous two. So zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, three plus two is five, five plus three is eight, and so on. We now have the Fibonacci sequence. Let's take a look at it using a recursive function in Scratch. Okay, so let's take a look at a recursive function in Scratch. In this program, we're going to list the Fibonacci sequence out to a given number. So the first thing I did was hit create, start a new project, and I'm going to name the project Fibonacci, F I. B O N A C C I. Now, in this program, we're going to do all the work in the stage, so we don't need any sprites. So, I'm going to right click and delete the cat. Before we build our function, we need to create some data structures or some variables. So, we go to data, we're going to need variable A and B. So B will hold the latest number in the sequence and A the one before it. And we're going to need a variable that we're going to use as a temporary variable to preserve the value. And we're going to name this temp, T-E-M-P. Now the Fibonacci sequence will be stored in another data structure called a list. So we're going to make a list and I'm going to name this list Fibs, short for Fibonacci, and hit OK. All right, so we have our data. Now let's build our function. So to build our function, we go to More Blocks. We're going to make a block, and we're going to name the block Fib Seq for Fibonacci sequence. And we're going to take in one parameter, a number, and it's going to tell us how far out to take the sequence. OK. OK, so it's a recursive function, so it's going to happen forever. From control, we're going to get a forever block. But of course, we know that at some point, there will be a condition that will kick the kick us out of the recursive function. So we're given the first two numbers in a sequence, 0 and 1. The first thing that would need to be calculated would be the third number. So our condition is numbers greater than 2. Since we're given 1 and 2, we only need to calculate the numbers that are greater than 2. So we need to calculate the third number, the fourth number, the fifth number, and so on in the sequence. So I'm going to go from my contr control and I'm going to get my if statement. So we want to know if the number is greater than 2, we want to keep doing this until it gets to 2. So we're going to go to operators and we're going to get the greater than. And we want to Keep doing this function until the parameter entered, the number 1, is greater than 2. 
Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to preserve the value of B. And we're going to preserve the value of B by using our temporary variable. And we're going to set that to equal B. So now when B is changed, we'll still know what it was because temp will be holding it. And speaking of changing B, we're going to change B now. So B, which is the next number in the sequence, the new B, will have to equal the old B plus A, the two numbers prior to it in the sequence. So we're going to set B to equal the sum of, or the add block, from data A and B. Then, we're going to add B to the list. Add to the Fibonacci B. Now we're going to set A to the old value of B. We changed B, but we have preserved the old value in temp. So, so now A is holding the old value of B. And now we're going to call the function again. This is what makes it recursive. So I'm going to go to my more blocks. I'm going to call the Fibonacci function once again, except we're going to decrement the parameter by one or decrease the parameter by one. So we're going to go to our operators. We're going to get a minus sign. And we're going to take the number one. Oops. I'm going to take the number one and subtract the number. And this will keep on going until that number is worked down to two. Once it's worked down to two, it will kick out of this if statement, at which point we will, in control, end this script. Okay, so we have our function. Now let's use it. So we're going to start our program with a flag click. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete the list. So if we ran this program over and over again, we would always want to start with an empty list. So to delete that list, we're going to go to, under the list commands, delete, but we're not going to delete one, we're going to delete all. Now since we're given the first two values of the Fibonacci sequence, it's part of it, zero and one, we're going to set those two values. So we're going to set A, to equal zero, and we're going to set B to equal one. The first two numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. And those are the first two numbers, so what we're going to do is we're going to add them to the list. So we're going to add the first number and the second number to the list, and then we're going to calculate the subsequent numbers. The first thing we would have to do is prompt the user for how many numbers they'd like to see. So we're going to ask, and I'll say, how many Fibonacci numbers? Question mark. And we're going to send that answer into our recursive function. Answer from sensing. Okay, so we don't need to see our variables, so I'm going to uncheck these variables. But we do, of course, want to see our list. I'm going to go full screen. I'm going to run the function. So there's one and two. How many do I want to see? What is five? Those are the first five numbers. Let's do it again. Run the function. What's the first ten numbers of the Fibonacci sequence? 34 is the 10th number in the sequence. We have now created a recursive function to find the Fibonacci sequence to a given number. Congratulations and well done.